Hey, Catalyst. How about some coffee? Uh, okay, uh, the question of morals. Um, so the simple answer is uh, morals are uh, um, kind of like community guidelines and like, like here's how we don't want to be surprised. If I, I don't want to go over to your house and find out uh, that we're eating people. I don't want Soylent Green for dinner. So you kind of make it, you know, a moral choice. Um, but the thing is, like, about with any of these moral choices, uh, is that uh, if people break them, uh, that society that, that all agreed on these rules without your consent uh, then punishes you. When really what they should do is like, hey, well, we didn't really like it that you served people for dinner. Um, so uh, you could go to prison. Or uh, there's actually countries where this happens. Um, you know, you could go join a tribe of cannibals. Uh, they're not that hard to find. You could actually be there in about a day and a half. Um, where you didn't break the law. Uh, you pro there's, then you have to learn their codes. There's, there's probably, you know, they have rules about it as well. So that, you know, your neighbor doesn't go missing. Um, but yeah, they're just silly little rules that we make up so that we're not shocked. It's like, hey, I looked over uh, at you in your backyard the other day and I saw something morally wrong. <laughs> but you, you go somewhere else and that's not done in the backyard. It's done in a public square uh, four times a year. Celebrates the seasons. Actually, it reminds me, I used to, I had a, a, a big tree den property once and I used to garden out there. And, uh, you know, no one could see into my property, so I'd walk around naked. And then uh, my neighbor was working on his roof and he wanted, he like wanted me to know, hey, <clears throat> you know, I'm up here, dude. And I'm like, all right, you want some cherry tomatoes? <laughs> like, I'm not going to go put clothes on just because you're working on your roof. Uh, it's no big deal. I'm naked, and uh, I'm uh, I'm working on my uh, my uh, tomatoes. Uh, but let me tell you a story. Uh, do you know uh, Anastasi? Uh, actually, there's a lot of different cultures that live in uh, uh, high up in uh, like little uh, uh, coves, cut in cliff faces, and uh, you know little teeny communities get uh, uh, built up there for protection and. Uh, so what if, like, as these, uh, these little communities are starting, uh, you know, there's 10, 15 people, and everyone's jammed into this little crevice, and, uh, you know, it's hard to get, like, building supplies up there. Um, so, uh, you know, we share walls. The roofs have holes in them, so smoke could come out, so everybody could hear what everyone else is doing. So you make this kind of, like, this moral code. And oddly enough, you call it window peeping. But it doesn't actually mean that you peep in windows. All it means is that you know what goes on in your neighbor's house. And you show that knowledge. Uh, so everyone just pretends, like the only way we're not gonna have problems here is just pretend like we're not having problems here. And we all can't leave, and this, is, this place works out for all of us, so we're just gonna make it work. But as that community gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and um, more of the crevices fill up and maybe even like it starts you know they stop needing the safety of of being in the high cliff faces uh so people move out to the valleys as well and, um but that that code stays in uh in effect that the moral pressure to not speak about what's happening with your neighbors and then uh this one guy this one anastasi guy started talking about hey we got problems we gotta we gotta fix them and the ruling uh uh, you know, are the, the people that were enforcing the morals kept trying to get him to stop talking about the problems everyone's having. And so, uh, but he wouldn't stop. He was, uh, he was unstoppable, indomitable. And so uh, they, they, they got him one day and brought him up into the cliff faces uh, to talk to him and said, you've got to change your ways. Uh, we don't want a window peeper in our community. And uh, this guy's like, hey, we've gone past the need for the window, window peeper moral code. Uh, there's people that we have here that are in trouble that need our help and we need to acknowledge that and not hide from it and pretend it's not happening. Uh, but they wanted to force him to, uh, to, to say that, you know, 
for, were doing moral pressure, but then that turned into physical pressure. Uh, and eventually, they ended up maiming his hands. And they said, like, well, stop. You could have, like, you have partial use of your hands, or you'll have, you know, well, that one hand will be good. We'll stop at any time that you agree to not be a window peeper. The guy wouldn't, wouldn't agree. So they, they maimed both his hands. And he came out the next day. And according to the rules, they could do this because no one's allowed to acknowledge it. Uh, the window peeper rule. You can't say, hey, Joe, what happened to your hands? Because that makes you a window peeper. Um, so this guy went out there and held up his ruined hands for everybody to see uh, and said, uh, our, uh, our elders did this to my hands. Our rulers did this to my hands um, to try to, uh, through pain, to try to manipulate me. And uh, the people couldn't have it. It was just too much. There was too much trouble and there was too much violence happening and suffering happening already. And then the fact that the people that are supposed to keep them safe, um, now they were parti uh, participated in violence. Uh, and so everything changed. All the walls came down, so to speak. Um, everyone started talking about the problems and how to fix them. And the people, the people that were trying to enforce the silence and mess that guy's hands up, they were removed from power. And the guy with his messed up hands now, it was hard in a hunter-gatherer society, um, in a builder society, you don't have any hands. But he could rule, he could talk. He knew what was going on with people, and so he ended up being their ruler. So he went from a, a moral outsider, uh, an outcast, a window peeper, uh, to being uh, the leader of his tribe. Yeah. All right. I'll see you in the shadows. <laughs> it's an awesome spot. This is where I imagine uh, the future is heading. We're all going to be walled in. <laughs> all right, Catalyst. Seen the tubes.